Well, staying with Nestle, which is the world's leading nutrition, health and wellness company, was founded in 1866 by a Swiss pharmacist and his name was Henri Nestle, I suppose. Henri? <laughs> exactly. So we're going to talk in a minute about all the brands that they own. But the coffee business is really Nespresso, which we've been talking about, as well as Nescafe. I think people will be familiar with the Nescafe, the Nescafe Encore Gold, all that sort of stuff. So it's instant granulated coffees and then don't forget all of the pre-prepared things like the Nescafe cappuccino all those things that come in those like tall sachets which is now a new product on the market that they're doing pretty well out of market cap here 251 billion dollars a PE of 16 and a dividend yield of almost three percent not bad stats across the board yeah, so, I mean, headquartered in Veve, V-E-V-E-Y, that's how you spell Veve, I think that's how you say it, in Switzerland. Uh, it's been in existence, as you point out there, since 1866. It's been progressively building its brands. Let's talk about the major areas in terms of profit contribution. Yes, what the are those major areas? We've covered. The coffee and the food, the nutrition uh, baby formula. Pre-prepared stuff of that nature, exactly. Cerelac, Gerber, those kinds of products for babies. Huge in bottled water. They own Perrier, Nestle Pure Life you'll be familiar with, Pellegrino, and products of that nature. In the United States of America, Poland Spring, also a huge water brand. Just looking at the share price graph, they're currently trading at just above $77. Yeah, as is typical what we do here, we're not tracking the price of Nestle in the Swiss market where it's principally listed. This is the ADR, which trades in New York. It's got the share code NSRGY. But yes, that's the five-year chart. You can see it doing particularly do well. Do you have clients exposed we to do, the Nestle story? We do. We absolutely do. And I own a, a fair chunk of those there myself. And I think it's really a play on brands in the emerging markets because we know that they are strong in Europe. They're strong in the U.S. There are a couple of other parts of the business. Pet food, huge. It's got a big stake in L'Oreal as well, which we've talked the about beauty before. The environment. Exactly. Confectionery. So there's Kit Kat, Smarties, Aero, you know, established brands in the chocolates area. Not a huge part of the business anymore. Used to be synonymous with that. The baby formula and milk related products. So coffee, creamers, uh, all of that sort of stuff. The Carnation the, brand. We're looking at a, a relatively diversified group here. Indeed. What is the catalyst that you're waiting for to see a value unlock from current levels? Because it's, it's tracking yeah. slightly higher, but there's no uh, huge well, move current to the positive. issues are with reporting and with currencies. So you remember all companies that have any kind of Swiss connection, there's been a bit of volatility in earnings. Net net, though, that appears to have been favorable for Nestle. No immediate problem in that space. I think the catalyst is really just more middle class consumption of the kind of branded products that they produce. So you're seeing that across the world. Nestle was a real early mover. They went into Africa, Asia and all sorts of other markets, Latin America, well, well before most people were doing that. And in quite a few instances, they actually separately located and listed their business. In Nigeria, for example, Nestle Nigeria is a substantial player, is listed on the what Nigerian stock market. What you're saying is that market. they understand the emerging market game, and that is going to be their Indeed. competitive so advantage going forward. So they employ a forward. lot of locals in their management structures in the regional business. They do a lot of production in emerging markets. So unlike other companies which make things back home and drop them in in a container, they actually go to the trouble of capitalizing their operations with local management and local factories. Gives I, them a big market advantage. Is this a, a long-term play for you? You, you know, five, ten years, you put it into the portfolio. It's one of those steady as she grows kind of stories. Absolutely. And I do think there will be further unlock. It's possible they'll sell the balance of the L'Oreal stake. They'll continue to do portfolio improvements. A company of this scale can literally swoop and buy, and they often do, buy brands where they see them having significant advantage. And in particular, bringing it back to coffee, in 2002, they bought the Ricoffee brand in this country. Now, Ricoffee is, is the, the market leader. Tin? Exactly. It's made with local vegetable product called chicory, which grows in the Eastern Cape. And that is a huge product in this market. It's by far and away the biggest coffee consumption brand in this country and that is one of Nestle's products and they bought it here locally they've developed and marketed the brand further hot or not definitely hot Nestle. we like it at around $80 for the ADR share you can also buy them in uh, Switzerland as I said definitely for me a good cornerstone position in a portfolio we expect it to have better and better profits and dividends over the years to come